What's up, sweetie pies? My name is Cake Game Lady, and welcome to part six as Avery Attorney. Well, from our last part, we went into our first trial, and we met the new judge, Judge Romulus, a wolf, and we got into a little bit of an argument with Coco Rico over this false witness. And now we only got three days until the next trial, in which we have to prove to the jury and the judge himself that. Prince Juan or Renault Volpez is innocent. So why don't we get started, shall we? Okay, I don't need to go. I can go there, but first, since we talked about the whole poisoning by eating the chocolate, we might as well visit the Chocolate Emporium. Oh look, an elephant! Welcome, welcome! Welcome to Landel Hagelslack's Chocolate Emporium. The finest Belgian chocolate shop in all of Paris. Oh, nice. I am Lander Hagelslack, the founder and owner of this establishment. Well, nice to meet you. And I am JJ Falcon, defense attorney. Good day, monsieur. Oh, lawyers! Very fancy. I must say that I once dreamed of being a lawyer, but, well, circumstances wouldn't allow it. Why, though? Why wouldn't it allow you to be a lawyer? It's a funny story. You see, when I was a young boy, I befriended the son of a Hungarian attorney. Oh, this is interesting. Falcon, you have to help me. What? W what is it? It's a smell, Falcon. It's overpowering me. It's demanding that blaze waste to the shop. Come on, Sparrison, can't you hold it in? For pity's sake, restrain yourself, Sparrison. Oh, but I'm rambly, aren't I? You're still talking? So, are you mysterious here to buy some chocolate? Well, yes. Yes! No, no. We're actually here on business, monsieur. Business? First things first. We believe that this chocolate raptor originated from your shop. Are we correct? Oh, yes, yes. That is indeed the trademark Hagelslack wrapper for genuine Belgian Hagelslack chocolate. This is almost certainly spot from this very establishment. Oh, well, that's good. Very good. With that established, there is something else we wish to ask Monsieur Hagelslack. Okay. Who... Who bought this chocolate anyway? Can you tell us who bought the chocolate that was contained in this raptor, Monsieur Hagelslack? I'm afraid not, Monsieurs. Why not? Don't you have a receipt or something? Not just because of matters of confidentiality. What in the world? For chocolate? Although that is a factor, you understand. But because I couldn't possibly know that. I thought elephants never forget. My memory is impeccable, monsieur. But you must understand that I have dozens of customers a day. There are hundreds of people that could have potentially bought this particular item. Well, do you know... Who, anyone who bought this on this particular date. Hmm. So your memory is good, but you need further information. If we were to give you the description in the name of the person, would you be able to tell us whether they purchased something from you? Oh! Yes, yes, that I could probably do, monsieur. Let me think. Who to ask about? Okay, I have to use my Facebook. Well, these are... These, no. Gotta go in the next one. Okay, Mousy, Quinell, Volarty, Juan Carado, Major Hal. Hmm. Let me see if Major Hal bought something from here. Have you ever served a member of the Royal Guard by the name of Major Hal? No, Monsieur. Are you sure? Yes, Monsieur. I have served many soldiers, but I don't recall seeing a Major here in recent memory. What does that mean, Falcon? Have we lost our lead? Not necessarily. It just means that Major Hal didn't buy the chocolate that may have killed him. There's still a possibility that someone bought the chocolate for him. That's our lead. That's who we want to find. I see. Okay, I did once serve a high-ranking officer of the British Army who was on his way to Zimbabwe. Simba I guess I used to pronounce it. I have to look it up. If you want to hear that story... No, I don't want to hear that story. Let me think. Let me, who to ask about. Okay, another one. So, Major Hal didn't eat the chocolate. 
Did someone give it to him? Let's see who can give. I highly doubt um our defendant did. Hmm. Who can a major accept a gift from? Someone probably he he trusts. Probably in a similar position as he is. He is a major in the army, so and Singe is having having problems with a high-ranking person in the justice system, so Judge Romulus? Let me go see. Have you ever served the hairy wolf in judicial robes named Judge Romulus? Yes, Monsieur. Oh, finally! Is that did he buy it then? Alright. Have you ever served Wait! Did you say yes? Yes, Monsieur. A wolf on judicial robes. I did serve a person like that a little while ago. On the 6th of January, to be precise. The day of the murder. Did he say or do anything suspicious? Not that I can recall, Monsieur. He was a pleasant fellow. Big toothy grin. Bought 200 grams of classic dark Belgian chocolate with a custom filling. Custom filling? A custom filling? Some type of caramel. He provided it himself, although he unfortunately did not bring enough for me to sample. <laughs> Please. It's a good thing you didn't sample it then. You probably ended up dead. What does this mean, Falcon? Well, we shouldn't make assumptions. It may just mean that this judge liked to eat chocolate. But if the judge is purchased and related to the rapper at the crime scene, then... Monsieur Hagelslack, do you think I could get a copy of Judge Romulus' receipt? I can do you better, monsieur. I have the original right here. I keep them for attack purposes, you understand? Oh, I understand. Is it okay for us to take it, monsieur? Absolutely! Memorizing the receipts contest is trivial, after all. Chocolate receipt has been added to your evidence folder. Would you take a look at this thing? Judge Romulus signed it in green ink. Why green, though? Usually I know blue or black. Red is not exactly the best color to sign it in, but green? I never heard of that. Green ink! I knew Judge Romulus was shady, but only truly villainous v people write in green. Thank you very much for your time, Mr. Hagelslack. You have been enormously helpful. I'm glad to be of service. I wish you the best of luck with your case, Monsieurs. That was it? I didn't get to ask the other question? Man! Okay, now what? Well, I might as well go to the car Joyce because a clock appeared there. There's probably something significant to the case. I probably have to talk to someone. So what are we doing today? Playing cards until we're flat out broke? Maybe. Let's see. Okay, who's in the drinking room? Falcon and Spirison return to the drinking room, but nobody appears to be interested in conversation. Well, okay, how about the card room? Ah, the big fellow returned! Here to play some cards, monsieur. Well, might as well. Absolutely! Deal me in, monsieur. Very well, then. Do you know how to play? Yep. Of course! I've been playing for years! Not- I didn't say that a while ago. Yeah, right. Don't get cocky, Falcon. Very good. I shall be the dealer. We will bet five francs per game. Here we go. Okay. Definitely love the music. Go for 21. Okay. Hit me! Okay, eight. Hit me! Dang. Only 18. I only have three to deal. Dang. I might as well stand. Hopefully he goes over. 3, 12, 16, 17. Woo! Ah, I win! Finally! Well played, monsieur. Here's your payout. We sh shall we have another round? Ah, uh, no, I'm done. Thank you, though. No, I think we're done. Maybe another day, monsieur. I understand. Feel free to come back anytime. Okay, I might as well leave. Man, that was like my second game. I finally won something. Are we ready to hit the road? Yep, let's go. Yep, let's make a move. Okay, the 20th. What in a world? 
Why? Where are all the other options go? Only AA offices. What in the world was that? I have no idea. Like I said, it's probably significant to the case. Hopefully something good. I'm feeling pretty confident about this case. The big picture is coming together nicely. I'm somewhat relieved that Prince Juan came clean. His secret was putting the whole case in jeopardy. Is that how you say? Jeopardy? What? We still got one day until the trial. But how to spend it? Well, gathering more clues, of course. I suppose we could visit the Lever. Or maybe we should just play some cards at Le Canard Joyce. Is something wrong, Sparrowson? You're being unusually quiet. Falcon, we need to talk. Oh, uh, oh, uh, what is it now? What's up? See, I was doing some thinking. Dangerous thing to do, I know. <laughs> anyway, I realized that we were missing a crucial piece of evidence. And what is that? What evidence would that be? Well, we know that Major Hell consumed a piece of chocolate before he died. And we know that he died of poisoning. But we still aren't sure that the chocolate was the cause. That's true. If we keep pushing the chocolate theory, Coco Rico will almost certainly bring that up. So I thought to myself, if one were to consume the raptor itself, then that may provide proof of whether it contains traces of poison. Well, sure. That could work. But it would be incredibly foolish. Wait. Were you thinking of eating the wrapper, Ferrison? Da, please don't. You're not good. You're gonna die. I like you. Maybe. Well, stop these thoughts right now. I'm not going to let you potentially kill yourself like that. Huh. <laughs> I knew you'd say that. That's why I already consumed the wrapper. Are you kidding? Why did you do that? 45 minutes ago. Oh my god, he's dead. Sparrowson? Sparrowson! Oh boy. Is this a hospital? I don't know. Is that a stork? Doctor, is Sparrowson okay? Man, that's a that's a huge syringe there. That's a long needle. Good thing I'm not one, near one of those. Well, okay, Dr. Falrett. Well, he's not conscious right now, but he is stable. I think it's safe to say that your friend is not on his deathbed. Oh, thank God. How did he say this happened again? It's a long story. Lowering corruptional hazard. Doctor, can you tell me what poison caused this? I have no idea. I'm an expert in mental health, not toxicology. Your experience in mental health? But I have sent for a specialist who should be here by tomorrow morning. He will make a full assessment. That's good to hear. Thanks, doctor. Take good care of him. Wait a moment. There is a matter of the bill. Oh boy, how much is it? We'll have to discuss it later. I have an important case to prepare for, and I'm one partner down. I see. Well, rest assured that your friend is in good hands. And pay the bill later. This is terrible. What the hell was Barrelson thinking? I can't win a case like this. Well, you can definitely prove that the wrap, the chocolate definitely had poison in it. You can just show them the medical, the medical record. You! I finally found you! Who knows this? Did someone say something? Running around like a headless chicken. You're one tricky lawyer to find. Okay. I told you to drop the investigation, but you just wouldn't listen. Who's speaking? I can't see you, monsieur. Step forward. Alright, I'll step forward. Finally, who in the world? But it will be the last thing you'll ever see. I'm sure. Yep. I'm sure. Man, he ran up behind me. Avoid, JJ Falcon. Did, did I get dragged into a river or something? What? What just happened? Where am I? Am I dead? No, that can't be right. This is nighttime. I'm just sleeping. But why is it so dark? If I focus and count to three, I should be able to wake up. One, 
two. Ah, uh, what? Did it work? What in the world? Ah, Dame Catalan! Is this a dream or something, or a memory? I can't believe how easy you were to fool. I put on the QC voice, acted all innocent, and you ate up the whole thing. What should I say? Shut up, or I made no mistakes. I don't know. I just wanted her to shut up. I should just say, shut up. Shut up! I don't need to be lectured by a murderer. I'm the murderer? Why, well, Mr. Falcon? It was your accusations that put Baron Vagul on death row. So he's on death row now? Man. It wasn't my fault. Hey, where are you going? Oh, look, Coco Rico. Out of my race, Severin. I'm not done talking to Game Catalan. It wasn't my fault? Is that the excuse you make after all your failures? I'm not making excuses. Failure after failure after failure. No desire to improve yourself. You're a joke of a lawyer, JJ. Don't call me JJ. That's all you have to say? How pathetic. You don't even deserve to stand in your grandfather's shadow. So his grandfather was a lawyer as well? My... My grandfather? I'll prove you wrong. I can do better. Oh look, Sparrison. Oh, it's you, Sparrison. Have you come to berate me too? What? No, no. I'm just here to tell you to wake up. Wake up, monsieur. Wake up. Hey, can you hear me? I said wake up. That's not Sparrison. He wouldn't say monsieur. Where am I? A day passed and I was unconscious. Pause to art. So I'm on the bridge that the Kingfisher was on? Yep, that's him. Come on, monsieur, wake up. I said wake up. You're starting to worry me. Oh, he's drenched. Oh, thank goodness. I wasn't sure whether I would have to find a doctor or a mortician. Uh, my head. Where am I? The Pont de Arts, you know, by the Laver in Paris, France. I just fished you out of the CN. Nearly broke my rod doing it. Well, thank you for your help, Kingsley. Wait, I know you. You're that disrespectful lawyer guy. Juro Falco or something. You got it all wrong. What time is it? Actually, what day is it? You hit your head pretty hard, huh? It's the 21st of January and around 9 o'clock in the morning by my reckoning. 21st. 9 o'clock. Uh-oh, it's at the trial. Oh no, the trial! I should have been at the decor assistance ten minutes ago. Well, you're running late, but take it easy, mister. I'm sure they'll be understanding. Maybe if I sprint it. In your condition? That would be stupid. Take a seat. Clear your head. I'll go get some dry clothes. No time. Wait, mister. At least take this before you go. What was that? Is that a knife or a pen? What's this? A dip pen? No, wait. It's a modern fountain pen. Bon bone handle. Gold nib. This is very fancy. Almost as fancy as high-ranking members of the justice system. Thanks, monsieur, but this is the mine. Really? Are you sure? You were holding it pretty tightly when I found you. I was holding this? Then... I suppose it has to be mine. Fountain pen has been added to your evidence folder. Thanks, the fisherman. I owe you one. Hey! Don't call me a fisherman! I gotta go to the trial. I'm running late. Ah, yep. They're waiting for me. It's 9 o'clock. I believe it's time for a roll call. Is the defense not present? Well, do you see anyone over there? Such unprofessionalism. If there's no defense, then this trial cannot proceed any further. We must make a ruling based on the evidence that was already been presented. I will now converse with the jury. We shall decide whether Prince Juan is guilty of murdering Major Hal and of conspiring to murder the king. Your Honor, may I have a word? Fine, but make it quick. 
I'm a firm believer that a trial must be orderly and punctual. There is no room for wishy-washy dilly-dallying. But it seems somewhat brash to end a trial session the moment it is due to start. Perhaps it would be prudent to wait ten, 5 or 10 minutes in case the defense is a little tardy. Then the trial still has a chance to proceed and justice will be served. You are the prosecution, are you not? You have nothing to worry about. A guilty verdict is all but guaranteed. What a world, man. Your Honor, you appear confused. I'm not here to secure a guilty verdict. Of course you are. You're a prosecutor. By definition, you're here to prosecute. No, my job description is to prosecute. But I am here, in this courtroom, to ensure that justice is served. An unfair and unbalanced trial is not in the spirit of justice. That's very noble of you, but if the defense is absent and there is little that can be done, I'll hear no more about this matter. I will now talk with the jury. Well, here I am. The <gasps> defense is present. <gasps> Your Honor. Yep, my mirror. You're too late, Falcon. Mon ma dude, JJ, you look like a total mess. Did you take a morning swim in the CN or something? S something like that. Your Honor, we all are present. We are only three minutes over the schedule. Let's not needlessly dirty the pure ma name of justice. Rules are rules, Prosecutor. Falcon clearly has no respect for legal procedure. Frankly, for turning up while looking down like a drowned rat, I ought to hold him in attempt of court. What in the world? Your Honor. <sighs> but Your Honor. Rules are rules. One more word out of either of you, and I shall have you both disbarred. Wow. It's a pity. The King of France was most looking forward to standing behind the witness podium. Oh, wow. Now, that is a very good opportunity to turn us around. The... The King of France? He's here? Oh, look, the Penguin! The Penguin King! Oh, are we not doing the trial after all? That's a pity. The... Your Majesty, what a surprise. We, uh, well, you see... You know, it's my seventh time testifying against a would-be assassin. Are you carrying an egg? Or, like, a, a egg-shaped globe or something? But it's the first time seeing a trial where the case has ended before it even began. Well, the defense, uh... He was late in a... That's a, that's no excuse. Oh, pish posh. France didn't become a great and dignified kingdom through rigorous punctuality. Let's go ahead with this trial. It'll be fun. Look, I'll, I'll say the oath to get started. I swear to speak without hatred and without fear. To tell the whole truth and nothing but the truth. Did I get it right? That was perfect, your majesty. JJ, I trust you have no objections with the king testifying. No! No objections here. Going ahead with the trial is fine with me. And surely you wouldn't stand in the way of the king, would you, your honor? Uh, he's backed into a corner. Ah! Fine! Proceed with this cursed trial. Excellent! Now, your majesty, could you tell us your activities on the day of the murder? My activities? Well, I started my day with tea and toast, as I normally do. I was just in my PJs at the time. Not like that, not that far back. I think you can skip ahead a little. Perhaps see your arrival at the Lever. All oh, right, of course. Well, my entourage and I entered through the Lever South entrance around 9 o'clock. We passed through the Salade de Tibre with a little fanfare. At the Grand Galerie, I unveiled the new painting and gave a short speech to inspire the citizens who attended. That's when I was approached by a man claiming to be the Princess Bane. He presented a rose, which was taken by Major Howell. And, well, I think you know the rest. Indeed we do, Your Majesty. Madams and Messieurs of the Court, what we have here is another testimony that establishes Prince Juan's guilt. And this is no ordinary testimony. It is a testimony of perhaps the most us-worthy man of all of France. Well... I don't know what to say about that. 
Oh, you flatter me, prosecutor. But I am the trustworthiest in all of the kingdom, aren't I? I have no doubts, your majesty. Nonetheless, I would like to perform a cross-examination. How dare you doubt your king? The utter nerve. Oh, calm yourself, judge. I have no qualms with standard legal procedure. Defense, please proceed. I want to see your best courtroom drama material. Aw, oh, thank you. Alrighty. Okay, South Ventress, Salat to Brick, Grand Galloway, Princess Spain. Hmm, which one should I select first? Okay, first of all, I'd like to talk to him about Salad de Tibre, because he was in that room, and that's where the chocolate raptor was found, so let me go ask him about that. Your Majesty, you say that you passed through the Salad de Tibre and the Bempoli. Indeed, we stopped briefly to look at the paintings, and then moved on to the Grand Gallery. Okay, what did you see in the, in the room itself? What about the other rooms, or never mind? Well, what did he see in that room during that time? Could you elaborate? What did you see in the Salad de Tupre? What did I see? Well, Roman stuff mostly. Like, um, other than that, did you see anything that was different during that time? I met aside from the Roman artifacts. For example, did you talk to someone in the room who wasn't a member of your entourage? You're reaching, JJ. The king already testified that he passed through while encountering anything of, in of interest. I just want the king to elaborate more on what he said. I have a reason to believe that this was a key moment on the day of the murder. I want the king to elaborate on exactly what and who he saw. Then I suppose we have to proceed, your majesty. Alright, let me think. So there was that giant doorstop. And there was that copper urn thing. Oh, there was something else now that you ask. I was offered a box of chocolates by some peasant mademoiselle. Okay. I don't have much of a sweet tooth, but Major Hal was keen to accept a chocolate or two on my behalf. So, he accepted poison chocolates? Good thing he didn't eat any. What? Hmm? Did I say something startling, prosecutor? N no please continue your majesty he knows that same conclusions I'm drawing I think the prosecution is startled because he just came to the realization that I was not spouting drivel in the previous trial session well that's debatable to cut a long story short your majesty this mademoiselle may hold some relevance to the case at hand could you describe her really she's relevant well let me think I didn't get a good look at her face, but she was a sorry-looking swan. That's a good description, sorry-looking. Probably in her late teens or early twenties. A young, sorry-looking swan, you say? I don't suppose her name was... Mademoiselle Singe. Mademoiselle Singe? Singe. That sounds familiar. Why, yes, I think that was it. She was called Mademoiselle Singe. I see. This is undoubtedly significant. Mademoiselle Singe gave chocolates to Major Hal minutes before he died. Now just one minute. I see what you're alluding to, JJ. You're suggesting that the gifted chocolates killed the Major. But that line of reasoning holds no weight because the evidence is circumstantial. Well, with J Sparrison in a hospital due to poisoning is not circumstantial. Circumstantial my tail feathers. The King just testified that Major Hal ate chocolates. Yes, no longer in dispute, but you still have not proved that the chocolates were poisoned. Without that, we must assume that the swan was merely g offering a gift, rather than speculating that she is a murderer. Yes! Yes! Oh, man. Same on you, defense, implicating a poor innocent girl like that. Absolutely disgusting. Why I ought to end this trial? Hold on! I do have evidence that the chocolate was in fact poisoned. I don't believe you, JJ. If you had a piece of evidence that was significant, you would have slammed it down today. Present it. Well, I can't. It's not really the evidence folder type of evidence. Why am I not surprised? The drama was just getting good. Why did you all suddenly go quiet? 
Well, your majesty, it appears that the defense had just had a realization of his own. That is that he lacks the evidence to support his theory. Since he cannot continue with his argument, I believe the cross-examination has come to an end. I'm not done yet! I'm not done yet! Let me present my evidence! See, I had the chocolate raptor back in my office, and Sparrison ate it! Stop, JJ! Stop while you have a little dignity. The results of whatever crockpot Pseudo scientific experiment you perform do not constitute valid evidence. Just say he's in the hospital! Get the doctor! I think this trial is over, Your Honor. About bloody time. You may take your leave, Your Majesty. Very well. I am pleased that justice has been thoroughly served. Until the next assassination attempt, adieu, messieurs. I will now deliberate with the jury. OBJECTION! Oh, Sparrowson! Sorry, I always wanted to do that. Sparrowson! Are you okay? Yep, the doctor said I have an iron stomach. Most of the poison passed straight through me. Speaking of which, I would like to testify that on that poison chocolate issue. I am a god doctor's note, see? It's too late. The trial is over. No, it's not. You can't be serious, Your Honor. The contents of that note could turn this entire trial on its head. You must allow it. Why are you constantly arguing with me? I thought the job of a public prosecutor was to sit the judges. No, it's not. I told you, Your Honor, my job isn't to get a guilty verdict. It is to ensure that justice is served. I swear, you are the worst prosecutor in all of France. Go ahead, Spirison. Read the contents of the note for the court to hear. Ahem. This patient, Spirison, was submitted to Salpetri Hospital, where he displayed a variety of symptoms. These included profuse sweating, a rapid fever, and severe nausea. The patient was diagnosed with poisoning, probably originating from the plate known as con Conconite, aka Monkshood, aka Wolfsbane. Monkshood? The same flowers we got from Cinch? And when we questioned the patient, he admitted to having a consumed a discarded chocolate wrapper, potentially carrying the poisoning. Examining the contents of the patient's stomach confirmed this to be true. As a mental health professional, I believe this patient is to be clinically... Oh, uh, we can skip that bit. <laughs> yeah, crazy to swallow it. Uh, yada yada. Here, okay, here we go. Signed, Dr. Lafrit. Thank you, Sparrison. I don't think I'll even need to question you. Between your note and the King's testimony, every angle of the chocolate wrapper business have been covered. Awesome! W wait did you say the king is here? You can get his autograph later. Right. So what happens now? Do I get cross-examination by the, by the prosecution or something? To be honest, I see little to cross-examine. Do your damn job, prosecutor! Cross-examine that little annoying liar of a bird! Tear his testimony to shreds! What's there in the world to cross-examine is a signed note from a professional doctor. Your Honor, he has a note signed by a medical professional, like I said, definitely proving that the chocolate wrapper from the crime scene was poisoned. Exactly! We could nitpick the details or delve into the doctor's credentials, but I fear it would be a waste of the court's time. Nobody wants that. Gah! So then, what the hell do we do now? We do nothing, Your Honor. This poison wrapper has introduced an element of doubt into the case. The prosecution must accept that. But is the level of doubt reasonable? Is it significant? I think that members of the jury will agree. JJ's evidence is still tenuous. Tenuous. A step above circumstantial. He had proven a link. A not wholly illogical link. But he have proved beyond doubt that Major Hell was killed by the chocolate. You are still making far too many assumptions. But my assumptions are becoming true! Where is the imperialism that is required by any good court of the law? Where are the witnesses who can back up your claims? What do we need witnesses for? Oh! I brought along a witness! Maybe she can help! Who is it? Oh! A singe! Uh, hello! 
You! Yeah, he recognizes her. Sparrowson, it's great to see you on your feet, and you have been an enormous asset to the case. But what are you trying to pull off now? Surprise witness! Surprise witness? When will she supposed to testify about? Yeah! I remember you mentioning that Coco Rico liked calling surprise witnesses, so I thought we could beat him at his own game. I brought the flower girl, Mademoiselle Sin, so she can testify about Prince Wong's character. I love the song that it makes for her. You're putting me in a difficult position, Sparrowson. Just moments before you arrive, we, the court, established that Mademoiselle Sin is a possible suspect for this case. What? That can't be right. Sparrowson, it's okay. Monsieur Falcon, I would like to testify. You want to testify? Do you understand what you are agreeing to? I wonder what, um, Renard is saying. I do. I have accepted my fate. Prosecutor, do you have any objections to me calling upon Mademoiselle Singe as a witness? No, none. Bearing in mind, of course, that you are here to defend Prince Juan, not to convict Mademoiselle Singe. Well, I know that. Prosecuting is my job. Of course. I have no objections either. Please proceed, witness. Speak the oath. The oath? Say that you swear to speak without hatred and without fear, to tell the whole truth and nothing but the truth. I swear, Your Honor, I swear to speak without hatred and without fear, to tell the whole truth and nothing but the truth. Good. Very good. Please state your name and occupation for the court record. My name is Catherine Marie Singe, and I am a flower seller. Mademoiselle Singe, tell a courtroom of your activities on the morning of the 7th of January. Very well. I saw the king and his entourage enter the Levere around 9 o'clock. I followed. When they came to a stop in Le Sau de Pre, I stepped forward and offered the king a chocolate. He refused, but a guard, a big dog by the name of Major Howell, was happy to oblige. The guard died because I personally had previously added poison to the chocolates. What in the world? You didn't do it on purpose. No! That can't be right! I used poison derived from monkshood, a notoriously dangerous plant. As a flower seller, it was simple to acquire. Why did you do it, mademoiselle? Why? Monsieur, people have tried to kill the king before, and people will try again. He is a vile man who has no respect or love for the people who suffer under him. What? That's not you. That's not the truth. I did it better the French people. You did it to save your parents. You tried to. That's why Renard tried to help. I don't believe that at all. Falcon, say something. Mademoiselle, are you being coarse or threatened? Speak freely. No, monsieur. I'm confessing on my own volition. It is my guilt and nobody else's. I don't believe you. Intriguing. Pretty convincing. Yeah, yeah. Well, defense, it looked like you wormed the confession out of this murderous pute. Is that how you say? Pute or pute? I suppose I guess your client, Prince Juan, completely off the hook. Lucky you. So shall we wrap this court session up? No, I haven't finished my examination. No, not yet. I have further questions for the witness, Your Honor. Further questions? To what end? You already proved your client's innocence. I wish to uncover the truth. You aren't here to uncover the truth. You're here to defend Prince Juan. And you've done that job with a disgusting level of diligence. Nonetheless, I believe that Mademoiselle has admitted something of huge importance. I wish you to question her further. Something of huge importance? I won't allow it. Fine. Can I at least show something to the witness? You and the prosecutor are a right pair of moralizing blowhards, aren't you? You are doing my head in. Fine. If it will shut you up, I will let you show one magical mystery item to the witness. I can't imagine you'll have anything up your sleeve to change the flow of this trial, though. Monsieur Falcon, save it. I have nothing more to say. Well, well, Singe, this will definitely change your mind about defending this poor loser. 
the ticket stubs that show that Renard Volpes helped send his parents get out of the country. Please take a look at these, mademoiselle. Train ticket stubs? Look at the names. Papa and Maman. In Vienna? Really? Are they really safe? Yes, they're really safe. They are. The tickets were arranged at courtesy out of the fox. Then... Then that means the wolf has nothing to hold over me. I can speak freely. Indeed. Go ahead, mademoiselle. Why are you two muttering about down there? You can't hear us? I'm amending my testimony, your honor. Members of the court, everything I said today has been the truth. I did go to Lavur on the 7th of January. I did present a box of poison chocolates to the king. Except it was not of my violations. I was threatened. I was forced to carry out the task under threat of harm. You see, my family has been struggling to get by. The winter has been harsh, and my flower business has been struggling. One day, a man approached me. A man I assumed to be kind-hearted. This man offered me 200 francs to get us through the cold. But I could not afford to repay the debt. When I attempted the bargain with the man, he offered me a deal. Assist him with murder and he would drop all the debts. Refuse and he would ruin me and my parents. I obliged because the alternative meant death for those I love. The name of the man who did this? Is Judge Romulus? Oh boy, she called you out good, man. What do you have to say for yourself, Judge? Ha! What a creative story. There's obviously a last minute desperate attempt at passing the buck. The sheer laziness of this girl to accuse a man she never met before? She's blatantly floundering. Indeed, I heard dozens of these self pitying yarns during my time as a prosecutor. Oh, come on. Although, admittedly, this is the first time I see a witness directly accuse the judge. Quite a brazen gambit. In, but in any case, these sorts of stories never turn out to be true. They are always proven to be fabrications born of desperation. I've never been more honest, monsieur. Listen, Mademoiselle Singe, I would like to believe your story. But accusing a man, a judge no less, of conspiring to murder the king is a hugely serious accusation. Do you have any proof to support your story? Proof? You say the judge lent you money. Then you both must have a signed contract when you made the transaction. That contract would suffice as proof. The contracts were all verbal. He... He said the money was a gift at first, and only later said that I had to repay him. Ha! Huh, how convenient! Of course this supposed contract doesn't exist. The mademoiselle has no proof because her story is a blatant lie. Falcon, you have to do something. Do you have anything to link Judge Romulus to Mademoiselle Singe? A link. Of course. Members of the court, I know for certain that the Mademoiselle story is true. I can say with certainty that Judge Romulus has made contact with Mademoiselle Singe in the past. I know this because at this very moment, I am holding a key piece of evidence that links Judd Romulus directly to the crime scene. Okay. It is... Where is it? Chocolate receipt? I think you should take a look at this, Severin. Huh? Me? You don't trust it in the judge's hand? He would tear it apart, of course not! What? What is that? What does that piece of paper say? Of course, he's worried. This is a receipt for a box of chocolates from Lander's Saddle Slacks of Chocolate Emporium on the 6th of January, made out to... To a man named Romulus? Ah, uh, he's nervous. He's no, he's caught. The writing upon the receipt is clear. A man named Romulus brought chocolates on the day before the murder. These chocolates happen to have the same brand and flavor as the ones that were used in the royal assassination attempt. By itself, this evidence would not be definitive. It would only suggest that the judge has something of a sweet tooth. But taken in conjecture with the Mademoiselle's updated testimony, that would imply that the judge would directly involve an assassination attempt. Judge Romulus, do you have anything to say about this? Yep. 
that receipt's not mine. I haven't stepped foot in a chocolate shop in years. You cannot be serious. The receipt is an indisputable proof of your purchase. Indisputable? Watch me dispute it. What you have there is a scrap of paper with the word Romulus scrawled on it. Is it a forgery? Are there simply two men named Romulus living in Paris? I don't have a clue. What I do know is that you have nothing to prove I was the one who signed the receipt. This is absurd. You want me to dig up court documents with your signature so we can undertake a handwriting analysis? That wouldn't be possible. I believe His Honor uses a rubber stamp for signing off on official court documents. Heh. <laughs> that would be correct. Well, it's no matter. I don't need the judge's signature. I already have in my possession proof that the signature on the receipt belongs to Judge Romulus. His pen. Oh, but first things first. I believe you dropped your pen, Your Honor. Huh? Oh yeah, that's mine. Thanks. I've been looking for that thing everywhere. I thought as much. Madame de Mazurus? Last night I was assaulted outside La Petre Hospital. I did not see the assailant's face, but I did accidentally grab something from the garments as I was thrown into the SDN. Oh, that's why you smell of fish. I wanted to say something, but I thought it might be rude. This fountain pen is the very item I grabbed. Ah, uh, he's nervous. D did I say this pen was mine? On closer inspection, I see I must have been mistaken. I save your honor. I am not here to press assault charges. What interests me most about this pen is the ink it contains. It is emerald green in color. And as we all know, only baddies write in green. Well, yes, but more importantly, it's a rare and unusual choice of ink color. I would venture that only a dozen people in all of Paris are ignorant enough to write in green. And I would venture that only one of these arrogant people is named Romulus. So Judge Romulus lacked respect for a classic penmanship. What of it? Take another look at the chocolate receipt, Severin. That receipt was signed with emerald green ink. It certainly is quite a coincidence. No! There is no more room for coincidence. There is no more doubt. There is only one narrative that can tie this ridiculous string of evidence together. On the 6th of January, you, Judge Romulus, bought a box of chocolates with a custom filling. That custom filling that contained poison, originating from the flowers of Mademoiselle Singe, a street seller who owed you a debt. On the 7th of January, you, Judge Romulus, leveraged a debt to force the girl to present the poisoned chocolates to the king. Then an idiot of a man by the name of Juan framed himself as the murderer in order to take the fall in Mademoiselle Singe's stead. You pushed for Juan's guilt by priming a witness, Monsieur Toussaint Kingley. And when that failed, you pressured Mademoiselle to take full responsibility for the crime. That is the only narrative that makes sense. Admit it! Fine! I do admit it! I did it! I purchased the chocolates! Add the poison! I put a peasant girl in debt just so I could force her to take the fall! I was the one who wanted the king murdered! But there is a not damn thing any of you can do about it. Yes, we can. We can put you in jail. I am the one who holds the gavel. I am the one who passes the sentences. With a snap of my fingers, I could have each and every one of you guillotine at the Place de Austerlitz before nightfall. Who judges a judge? Who stands above me? Nobody. Not even God can detend me while I sit so highly. What about the king? Oh, uh, look. Follow T. Attempting to murder King, corrupting court assistants, what an utterly repulsive individual. Don't touch me, you dirty pig. You have no authority over me. Ah, oh, there's a king. He doesn't. I do. Take him away, Spectre. I'm not done. I'm not done with any of you. You're all guilty. You'll see. A revolution is coming. The rebels will overrun Paris. The king and the government will fall. The Burkhors will be slaughtered. We shall have a glorious second republic. A republic free of class. Where everyone is free and equal. Hey, hey, don't touch me! Just another ranting lunatic, your majesty. 
Ignore him. Of course. Carry on, Inspector. Well, there they go. Okay, now who passes on the sentencing now? What? What happens now? Uh, yeah, how about the other judges? I... I guess I'm supposed to take over the president judge's duties? Well, given the surprising series of revelations that just took place, we believe that the results are clear. We find the defendant, Prince Juan Kirido, to be cleared of all charges. We therefore find the defendant not guilty? NOT GUILTY! <laughs> Still no confetti. What? What happens to me now? Mademoiselle, it is clear you were coerced. However, you still played a significant role in the king's assassination attempt. By all rights, you must be tried for your crimes. I see. I cannot argue. But as it happens, due process was not followed during this trial session. Judge Romulus thoroughly disrupted the proceedings. Consequently, I believe that most of the testimonies given during this trial would not be seen as valid in a court of law. So basically, she's free to go then? What does that mean? He's saying you're free to go. Correct. As a prosecutor, I see no crime to prosecute. Really? Thank you so much, monsieur. And thank you, messieurs. Without your help and assurances, I don't know where I'd be right now. So, are my parents really in Vienna? I think so, but you have to ask the fox for details. I don't know exactly what he arranged. Although, now that Judge Romulus poses no threat, I suppose your parents would be free to move back to Paris. Actually, you're staying in Vienna? Yep. I may follow them to Vienna. You need a holiday after all this drama? Well, yes, but I also want to get away from here. Before, you know, before the fighting starts. You mean the revolution Judge Romulus mentioned? He doesn't seem mentally stable. Pay him no mind. It's not just him, monsieur. In the streets, everyone talks of an uprising. If you were smart, you would be clear of you too. Thanks for the concern, mademoiselle. But we're far from smart, so we're staying put. I see. Then good luck, messieurs, and farewell. Maybe we can meet again when this is all blown over. Well, there she goes. Wait, mademoiselle! Don't you want to have a quick celebratory drink? Oh, she's gone. So I guess it's just me, you, and the fox. Right, Falcon? That sounds good, Sparrowson. Take Prince Juan back to the Avery office. I need to sort out some paperwork or severing. Okie dokie. I suppose the congratulations are in order. Uncovering the truth in the way you did? It was quite a feat. Everything went far better than I hoped. But you surprised me at the end with that little lie of yours. Lie? This trial's testimonies are completely invalid? Bullcock. You and I both know that this trial has produced ample valid evidence for Mademoiselle saying she'd be detained and tried. Even with the coercion accounted for, I bet you would still be found guilty of conspiracy accessory to murder. So why are you holding back? Hmm. You know, ten, maybe even five years ago, I would probably ha would have prosecuted Mademoiselle Singe. When I was fresh out of law school, I thought my role as a prosecutor was to condemn every potential criminal that came in my way. I thought, if the guilty person ends up behind bars or on the hanging dock, then justice has been served. But as I gained experience, I started noticing the details. The details. Excruciating circumstances. The personal considerations. The gaps in the law where even the due process allowed is followed to the letter. Good people are punished and the wrongdoers fall free. I hated it, so I changed my role. I decided I should not strive to secure a guilty verdict, but to ensure that justice is served. I could prosecute Mademoiselle Singe, and she would definitely be convicted, but that would not serve justice. You're a good lawyer. You're a good lawyer, Kokoriko. You? Well, you're not terrible, Falcon.
Well, that's better than nothing. I must congratulate you, Senior Falcon and Senior Sparrison. Huh. What am I doing? Still using that old accent. I have, of course, meant congratulations, Monsieur Falcon and Monsieur Sparrison. It's no big deal. We were just doing our jobs. No, no. Your job ended when you proved my innocence. Everything after that was you going above and beyond your duties. Of course, I was counting on you to do so. A lesser lawyer would surely have stumbled or caved in. Of Oh, but before I forget, your payment. Thank you, Monsieur Volps. This has been a strange case, but I'm glad the truth came to light. I'll see you out. Wait, Monsieur Volps! Before you go, something has, something's been bothering me. Why did you come to us in the first place? Surely there are much more re reputable lawyers out there who could have done a better job. Oh? More reputable than the falcon that stands before me? Uh, yeah. Falcon's got a sucky track record. True, he does have a mixed record, but his family name is hugely respected in the lawyering world. I chose Monsieur Falcon as my lawyer for that reason alone. Huh? Really? I never heard of another lawyer named Falcon. Let's not go down this road, Monsieur Phelps. I don't go by my old name for a reason. That is fair. We shouldn't be fixated on the past, should we? After all, it's already been gone. It's already been and gone. The future is where our potential lies. That's where we should be be paying attention to. A storm is approaching fast. You mean the revolution that the crooked judge mentioned? Indeed. I dare say that the wolf is right. A rebellion is coming, one way or the another. Listen, Monsieur Falcon, you'll probably have a surge of work over the coming days. If you want me to dig up the dirt on anyone, please feel free to drop by my office at any time. Well, thank you. Dig up the dirt? I am a private investigator, is what I do. We'll be we'll bear it in mind. Thank you, Monsieur Vulps. Good day, Messieurs. I'm going to get a drink. Seriously, Falcon? What? I was just going to ask if you want a tea or a coffee. Oh man, they, oh, I am so grateful for that. Whew! Man, that one ended really great instead of like the last one. Oh man, that was so good. Well, I might as well end this for now. This is all for part six of AV Avery Attorney. So tell me in the comment section, what did you think about the case now that it's concluded? I think it's a great relief from the last one. At least we actually saved, let's see, two people, you know, Renard Volps and Mademoiselle Singe. And we got to put away the judge who was convicted of trying to kill the king and murdered Major Howells instead. But now we got this whole concern of the upcoming rebellion. And I have no idea what's going to happen next. Man, I love this story better than the last one. Because, you know, other than the whole backstabbing and all. And remember, like, subscribe, and share with all your friends. And I'll see you more in my next video. Bye!